Hey guys and welcome back to you, Nico Dev. This is the third episode of the mini series on how to make a chat system using Firebase. Now we covered a lot of the chat system making business. So as you can see I just authenticated and I can send any message and it's going to work and it's gonna even remember my name which I set to empty so that is why it's empty. But if I set my name to anything else it's gonna also remember that that's my nickname and I'm gonna be authenticated. Now what do we have to do today? Today we have to show how can a user edit and delete their messages and also how can you, the app maker, externally change some messages, for example if they have profanity we can make a profanity filter. Now if you are excited you can leave a like and also if you are new to the channel just found out this thing exists you can also subscribe and hit the bell. Alright that said let's begin. So today we have to talk about editing messages. So the first thing I want to go uh, and do is go to the database API class where we have a function which is post message and now we're going to have another function which is going to be similar and we're going to call this edit message. Now if you go to the message object as you can see we have the text of the message. Naturally we cannot edit the sender uh, of the message. The only thing we have to edit is the text of the message itself. So this database API, instead of taking the entire message, is gonna uh, just take a string, which is gonna be the new uh, text. But before that, it also needs to take a string, which is the message ID. And we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna talk about how to retrieve this message ID in just a moment. So this time, instead of pushing data into messages, we have to remove push because we don't need to push any data, like we don't need to generate an automatic ID like Firebase does. All we need to go uh, do is, instead of going only in the messages branch, we also need to go deeper into the message itself. So right here we go into the message ID. And then we go into the text field. And we're gonna set the text field to the new text. And this is really simple, we don't even need to serialize any data because this is already a string. So if I remove this, this should already work. Now the delete message should be even easier, because we don't need a new text, the new text is basically gonna be no, because the message is deleted. Now there are two ways we can go about doing this, one way is to literally delete the entire message, so go inside the message ID, this is gonna delete the message. But another thing we could do is instead of deleting the entire message, we delete only um, the text of the message, uh, so then we already we still know who sent the message and uh, you know uh, that the message was deleted. This is similar to what, for uh, example, WhatsApp does when you delete a message, because instead of deleting the entire message, it will only delete the text of the message and it will display this message was deleted. But honestly, I don't like that philosophy because you cannot really hide anything from anyone when that happens. Like, you misclick and you send a message that you didn't want to send, and even if you delete it, it's still gonna stay there, you deleted this message. So for my chat system, we're not gonna have all of this funky business, we're just gonna literally delete the entire message. So there will be no trace that I ever sent a message if I try to delete it. Also, I need to rename this function to delete message. And I believe this is all there is to it. Now if you are confused about you know, the Firebase database structure, I'm gonna show you it in just a moment. I believe there are already a few messages in there that we can test. As you can see, if we are in messages, we have already a bunch of messages. When we want to edit a message, let's say this one, we are gonna go to messages, the message ID, which is this string of text right here, we will go to the text field and we're gonna set this value to the new text value. While when we want to delete a message, we're just gonna go in messages, the message ID, for example this one, and we're just gonna set the entire field to null, so it's just like deleting everything. Okay, great, I think this is clear enough. Now let's actually work on the UI and how to make you know this possible via our code, because we created the API that can basically do just this, but you know, we need to uh, uh, merge it with the UI, we could say. And the first thing I need to do straight off the bat is actually change something we did in the last episode. And the reason I want to change this is going to become apparent really soon. Basically in the message object right here we are sending, we are, um, uh, sending the text of the message and also the nickname of the sender. Instead of only sending the nickname of the, changer, of the sender, we also need to send the sender user ID. 
and you're gonna know why we need this uh, later in the video, but it's gonna return useful. So we can call this function right here, uh, sorry, this variable right here, sender nickname, and this one right here can be, uh, yes, you can rename that, sure, and this one right here can be sender user ID. Great. And I also want this in the constructor too. Okay, awesome, and now uh, there is gonna be an error because when we instantiate this, uh, we don't actually, you know, we didn't put this in the constructor. So all I need to do is uh, API, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no, we can get the user ID quite easily, not by doing get user, but I think I already have a method which is get user ID. Okay, great. Okay, and I think we are done. Yes, because this is the only time we instantiate a message where we want to send it. Okay, awesome, and now since I changed all of the structure, I better remove everything from my database, uh, because else, you know, we are gonna get exceptions because I changed the, the structure of the database, or at least how the data was structured. Now I can hit play, and I can log in again with my uh, credentials, and you're gonna see that this is still gonna work, uh, just like it was working before, hopefully. Yes, I can send a message and everything is gonna be fine, but instead of only having uh, the sender nickname, which in, th in this case is empty, we're also gonna have the sender user ID. Now let's actually work on the UI. Uh, so right here, as you can see, when we create a message, all that we are doing is instantiating a text field. And now we need to make a little bit of a more complicated UI, because we need to add two buttons. A button to edit the message and a button to delete it. So right here I believe we have the prefab that we created, which is our message, and instead of this being only a text, uh, we can actually copy this and uh, set it as a child, and it is gonna be the text of the message itself, while here we can remove the text, okay great, this can stay as it is, but we can just add a few buttons. And I'm just gonna fast forward me doing the UI. Okay, great, and I believe we also need a class that will help us manage uh, all of this stuff. We can call this class message handler. And basically this class is gonna be inside the message prefab, so we're gonna have one instance of the class for every message. Okay, and inside of here we can put all of the information we need about our message. Actually, we could have uh, the entire message right here and just call it message. And then I'm just gonna add some things that we will need in the future, just so we are already prepared. We need a boolean right here, uh, which is gonna tell me if we are the message owners or not. Okay, and finally, right here, as soon as we instantiate the message, uh, we are gonna change the text of the message, which we can get. I believe it's the first child. Yes, this one is the text. We can do get component uh, text mesh pro. Uh, but naturally this component is in the child, so we can do get component in children. Okay, great. And the text can be the message.text. And actually, just to make this a little bit cleaner, instead of doing all of this mess, I can actually add these references in the inspector. So right here we could have a text mesh pro, and then I'm gonna have a reference to both of the buttons. So we're gonna have the edit button and the delete button. So here I can just do text.text .text is message.text and also if we are not the owners uh, we don't do anything, okay? If we are not the owners we return, while if we are the owners we are gonna make the buttons enabled. So right here instead of having the reference to the button itself we can have the reference to the game object so we can enable and disable it. So we can set active to true and set active to true. And by default we're gonna keep this disabled. So only if you are the owner of your message, you can delete and edit it. Okay, and then we're gonna have two functions. One is to edit the message, and the other is to delete it. And these functions are gonna get triggered when we press those two buttons. Okay, great, and this is gonna work. Okay, so right here, let's add all of the different things that we need to add. So edit and delete, I believe, yes. And then uh, inside of these two buttons, we can actually add the onclick listeners to our message handler. And the first one is gonna refer to editing messages, while the other one, when it gets pressed, is gonna delete a message. Or delete this message. Now one thing that I forgot to add actually right here is the message ID, which we also need to get. Great, and now uh, I think we're actually ready to go. When we want to edit a message, we're gonna communicate with the database API, 
dot edit message uh, no I have to go I remember yeah API handler dot instance dot database API dot edit message okay great and we can already give the message ID uh, while the actual new new text uh, we're gonna get it from the input field of sending a message so this is gonna be a little bit weird but I'm just doing this because I don't want to focus on the UI uh, I just want to focus on the functionality but basically you see this input field right here uh, which we use to send a new message uh, it's gonna be the same input field we use to edit an existing message so we're gonna put the text right here and when we click on edit it's gonna edit the, the message with this new text and I believe I have actually a reference to this input field in the main handler so the main scene handler and we have it right here is the text input field so I will just add a static reference to this scene handler so I will create a new static reference um, which is going to be our instance, so I can access it from everywhere. And right here, at the beginning of the everything, as soon as I instantiate the class, we are going to set this instance. Now, naturally, in your application, you don't have to do this, because you're, you're probably, you know, when you click on the edit button, you will probably uh, have a function to actually edit the message you already sent. I'm only doing this, as I said, because I don't want to do any further Y on this. And this is why we need to do this weird singleton right here. But now in message handler, we can edit the message and go to the main scene handler dot instance and get the text, the new text of the message we want. And then I also believe we need the, we need a callback. So what to do afterwards. Okay. This is great. And then uh, what, what, we, what to do if everything goes terribly wrong, which is just to debug.log the exception. And right here we can just do debug.log message edited. Okay, and I can just copy this and do the exact same thing here, uh, but with delete message, and then I can do message deleted. And right here we actually don't need this, because, you know, okay, we are setting it to null, we are deleting it. Okay, this is great, I can actually simplify all of this code, I can actually simplify it further, like this, and this looks neat. Okay, I believe we did all of the stuff regarding posting, like posting some information, editing the message, or deleting it. Uh, what we need to do now is do some handlers that will actually retrieve the information. The reason I say this is because at the beginning of episode 1, uh, the first thing we did was creating this function right here, which is listen for messages. Now, if you recall, this function is gonna get triggered only when we create a new message. As you can see, it's gonna respond to a child added event. Now, when we actually edit or delete a message, a different event is going to be called. It's going to be called, if we delete a message, we're going to get a child uh, removed uh, event. And if we change a message, it's gonna, we're going to get a child changed event. So right here, let's actually rename this function to listen for new messages. And then we're going to create a bunch more functions. Uh, we're going to uh, copy this two more times because we're going to have this one, which is going to be listen for edited messages and this one which is listen for deleted messages. And basically all that is going to change is this event right here. This one is going to be looking for when a child changes, and this one is going to be looking for uh, when a child gets removed. Now naturally we don't need to use the same message listener uh, that we have right here. We actually need three different message listeners. We can rename this one to a new message listener, and this one be, is going to be a edited message listener. And this one is going to be a uh, deleted messages listener. Okay, great. And now let's actually reference these in our code. So right here we wanted an edited message listener. And right here we want a deleted message listener. Yes, nice. Okay, and when we stop listening for messages as a whole, we can actually remove all of, the, all of these. So right now we are only removing the new message listener, but we can remove all of them. Child changed and child removed. And there we go. So now we're also gonna get, you know, a feedback once a user edits and delete, uh, deletes a message. Now the only thing that is left to do is this callback right here. What are we gonna do after we realize that a user has edited this message? And in order to work on this callback right here, we need to add something that we never added before in these three episodes, and that, it, that is now useful. We need to store all of the different messages. So right here, uh, if I go to actually when we instantiate the messages, which is in the main scene, right here, when we instantiate a message, we literally just instantiate it and then kick it goodbye. As you can see, this new message right here, which is a game object, is not getting stored anywhere. 
we actually need a list of game objects or a list of uh, message handlers would be better. So I'm gonna have a list of message handlers, which are gonna be all of the messages that we ever sent and that the user, the client has and has instantiated. Instead of this being a list though, I think it's even better if it's a dictionary. And basically, if you're unfamiliar with dictionaries, they're basically like an array or a list, uh, but the index, the key, doesn't have to be an integer, so it doesn't have to be like 0, 1, 2, 3, just like the arrays are indexed, but it could be any object you want. In this case, it's going to be a string, because we are gonna uh, organize all of our messages by the message ID, which we're actually gonna retrieve when we edit and delete messages. Okay, great, and now let's start adding to this message handler. Okay, so right here, the instantiate message only has um, uh, one parameter, which is the message, and unfortunately, we don't know the message ID from right here. We only have the reference to the message itself. So let's add a parameter, which is gonna be the message ID. And now, right here, we're gonna get some errors, because right here, we also need this parameter. So we, uh, right here, we are calling the uh, callback, with the message text, the message itself, but we also need the message ID. And we already have the message ID because the message ID is in these arguments right here. All we need to do is arguments.snapshot.key. Uh, so before we had the snapshot, and the, the snapshot is just, a, uh, it's just the data of the child, so it's all of this data, okay? And we got the value of the snapshot, which is all of the stuff that is inside, okay? While right now we are getting the key of the entire snapshot, and basically the key is just a message ID. And this is a string, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a string. So now I believe this works, yes. So when we instantiate the message, right here, uh, this code right here, this line of code is pretty old. It's from the first episode. And as you can see, it's looking for a text pr uh, mesh pro component. Uh, but it's not gonna find the component, because at the beginning of this video, uh, this prefab became a lot more complicated, uh, and now it's not gonna have a text right here, but it's gonna, have a, uh, it's gonna have it as one of its children. So instead of retrieving the component ourselves, we're just gonna retrieve the message handler um, script, okay? And we are gonna call this the new message handler. Great, and now we can set up this message handler using all of the fields that we already created uh, before, at the start of the video. And the fields we need to set are these ones. So we can already set the message field to message, we can also already set the message ID field uh, to message ID. And finally we need to set the is owner field, and this is why at the beginning of the video in the message uh, thing we added the sender user ID. This is where it's gonna come useful, because we, uh, we're gonna check, okay, if the message dot uh, sender user ID is equal to the, uh, the user ID we are currently logged in as. And in order to check, we just have to go to the API handler dot instance dot OTPI dot get user ID. And if these two are equal, it means that I'm the guy that sent the message, so I should be able to edit it. And I think this is all we need to set up, because the code uh, for it is already done in the start function. Okay, great, and now the last thing, we actually need to add this message handler onto our dictionary. Okay, so we're gonna do a new message handler, uh, sorry, uh, the dictionary which is message handler, we need to change the name of the dictionary maybe, uh, dot add, and we're gonna add this one, and the key is gonna be the id, which we already have, it's this one right here. Great and we're gonna call the dictionary uh, messages. Okay, great. So now we need two methods that are things that are gonna happen when we edit or delete a message. So we're gonna have a private void uh, edit message. And just for consistency, we can call this uh, create message. So this is gonna be edit message and this is gonna be delete message. And they're gonna be quite similar. They're basically gonna worry about this uh, thing right here. They're gonna interact with this a list of messages and either edit their contents or delete them uh, completely. Okay, so right here, if we want to edit a message, and naturally we need we need the ID of the message, message ID, uh, and the same thing goes for this one. Yes, we can just look for the message itself, so we can go in messages, look for this message ID, and then go to the text, okay, and change it to the new text. So we're gonna have a new text right here. Boom. And this is what we do if we want to edit the message. 
Instead, if we want to delete the message, we only need the message ID. Okay, so I'm gonna get the message uh, again, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna destroy it. So I'm gonna get the game object and I'm gonna do destroy this one. So it's like the message is going to collapse. And then I'm also gonna remove it from the list so we don't get confused. And we are gonna do messages dot remove this message ID. So it's gonna be removed from this list because it's deleted. Okay, great. Okay, and I'm just thinking if there is anything else I'm supposed to be doing here. Oh yeah, we actually need to call these functions. As you can see, the create message function is getting called as soon as we listen for new messages. Uh, we need to call uh, these two functions also in a similar manner. So I can just copy this code two times, and instead of listening for new messages, I can do listen for edited messages, and we're gonna put edit message, and listen for deleted message, and we're gonna put delete message. Now naturally we're gonna have exceptions right here, but it's normal. Because right here, when we edit a message, we're actually looking for a string string, which is gonna be the message ID and the message text. So right here, instead of doing all of this mess, we don't actually want to deserialize the, uh, the snapshot. We actually want to get the text of the user, so we can do uh, at the snapshot.child. Uh, the snapshot is currently on the message, at example, it's right here, okay? When I get the child, I can get the child text, and I can get this value. So I can do dot child text, and then I can do get row JSON value, and we are gonna get this as a string. And then before actually getting this, because this is gonna be the second parameter, which is the new text, uh, we need to get the actual message ID, which is just arguments.snapshot.key. Okay, great, and let's do something similar for the delete messages. This is, gonna want, this is gonna want a string, which is basically the message ID, and right here, instead of all of this mess, we're just gonna give him the message ID. Bam. Okay, like this. Okay, great, and I'm not sure if this is all there is to it, I'm pretty sure this is all there is to it. Naturally, we're probably gonna encounter some bugs, uh, but we're gonna fix them along the way. Uh, the structure, you know, logically-wise, this should be working. I just need to start everything on the correct scene. So let me go to the loading scene. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna create a new account for this one. I'm gonna create a test at test.com account. Uh, I'm gonna write my own nickname, which is Nico. I'm gonna put always the same password and sign up. Okay, great. I'm gonna be sending my first message, which is gonna be Nico. And okay, the message is appearing. I, I can edit and delete it because, you know, I'm sending it myself. So this is correct. Let me actually restart the app now and sign in as a different person. I'm gonna sign in as uh, my actual main account and I, I'm actually gonna do some dirty job and go to my main account and actually change my nickname because right now it's empty, I don't want that. I'm gonna call him N Main Nico, okay, so we remember. And we're gonna sign in. Okay, see, and I already see this is a bug uh, that they, I can still see the, the buttons and we don't want this. Uh, but the reason why that is, is because the buttons are enabled by default. We actually want this to be disabled by default, I forgot to do that, whoops. Okay, this works. Uh, the only thing is that we are not actually getting the author of the message right here, and I already know why that is happening. Uh, it's because right here, if I go to the message handler, we're actually just setting the text to the text of the message, and we don't want that right here. We actually want to set it to what we were setting it before, uh, which is like message dot sender nickname, and then a column, and then the, the message itself. Okay, great, and let's, let me actually copy this code, because I believe I'm doing the same mistake right here, here, where is it? Yeah, right here, when I edit the message. Oh, and see, this is actually pretty bad, because as you can see, I only get back the new text, I don't get back the new author of the message, so I actually don't know what to input right here. Okay, I guess I could take it from here itself, it's not really pretty, uh, but it's gonna work. So, right here, from the message itself, and the text instead can just be the new text. Okay, so I'm basically taking the author of the message from uh, right here, from this variable right here. Okay, great, and now this is also supposed to be working, let's try one more time. I will actually log in back to my test account, so they're probably gonna be switched. The first one is gonna have the edit and delete options, the second one is not. Okay, great, as you can see that's the case. And now I'm actually gonna edit this message to not Nico, and hopefully the message is gonna be edited. Uh, edit. Okay, it tells me that the message is edited, but I'm getting some exceptions. 
Okay, the exception uh, appears here. It means that the message was indeed correctly edited, uh, but the result of the message actually made it go to null. So as you can see, there is no message right here. And this is why we are getting this exception, because it will say, hey, there is no message. What do you want me some to send back? And this is why it's retrieving me an exception. What I don't know is why the message was set to null. Uh, so we, I guess we're gonna need to figure it out right here. Uh, right here we are editing the message and we are editing it from here and we are getting the message from this uh, text input field right here. Now I'm pretty sure this text input field is this one, so I'm not sure why it's not uh, getting up on it uh, or coding it. The best way to figure this out is just to open up a debugger and as you can see I have it open and now we're gonna stop the code from running once we reach this point. So we're gonna figure out what is going wrong, we're gonna try to edit the message again hopefully Okay, and let's see what the text is. Oh no, the text is actually not Nico, so this is going through. Okay, let's keep going forward, let's see what I'm doing wrong. So we are setting the value to the new text, and I think I know what I'm doing wrong, because this is actually a JSON, okay? Uh, and I should be serializing it as a string, uh, but I'm not, okay? So what I really need to do right here is to actually add some quotation marks. So there are two things I can do. Okay, I know this is a little bit confusing, but I think I figured out why this is not working. So I either go right here, okay, uh, like this, okay, and I make this a string and add quotation marks on both ends of the string, just like this. So it's serialized into a JSON, or I copy this code that I have right here, the message JSON, and I just put the new text right here and I make it a type of string. This is gonna do the exact same thing, it's basically gonna put quotation marks at the beginning and at the end of the of the string so that it's uh, correctly serialized. We are gonna do this this way just so it looks a little bit prettier and I believe now it's going to work. I don't think I need to actually serialize anything right here because we're setting the value to null so uh, you know we're not serializing anything. Okay great uh, for the last time hopefully this is the right time this is gonna make everything work. All right so we go I'm gonna log in I don't even know what I'm gonna log in as right now I'm, ju I'm just gonna use the test account we're gonna sign in, okay, we're gonna edit the message, right now the message as you can see is empty because, you know, because of my problem, uh, it actually sent out something that um, Firebase didn't recognize because it wasn't in a correct JSON, and so Firebase set the message to empty. Now let's try to set it to something else, let's try to set it to test, and if we edit, okay, it's gonna work. So the message will be edited and you're gonna listen for the message and we're gonna get it back. Now let's actually try to delete the message, or uh, let's actually edit it um, another time, let's see if it works, okay, it works flawlessly, and as you can see it's getting also edited on the database, pay attention to this variable right here, if I edit, as you can see it just got edited, okay, and if I delete, it's gonna delete it. Awesome, this works surprisingly well, and you can see how fast this is. So just in case you missed something, I'm not doing anything on the client side, uh, so when I delete a message, uh, let me see if I send a message, okay, when I click on delete, this message is only collapsing, it's only getting deleted once, you know, um, I actually listen for that message getting deleted. So you can see the speed of the real-time database uh, by looking at the interval in between me pressing the button and the entire button getting collapsed and getting deleted. And you can see this is literally a fraction of a second. So all of this is doing is it's deleting the data right here, and then we have the listener in the database API, which is basically listening for when we deleted a message, and when we did, it's gonna delete this game object right here. And as you can see, I'm gonna do it one more time, and as you can see, it does it in literally one fraction of a second. Okay, this is exciting, and now we have uh, an entirely or almost entirely finished chat system. What's left to do? Okay, the only thing that is left to do, or the only two things that are left to do, are the profanity filter, uh, and we're gonna do that using cloud functions, and also we need to secure our chat, because right now, okay, on the UI, I made it so only I can edit and delete my messages, but maybe a hacker could do some requests to the database and could delete other people's messages. So that's really bad. Now I'm gonna do a tutorial 
on both of these aspects that we didn't cover yet and it's gonna hopefully be the last part, part 4 of this mini series. But if you don't want to wait for part 4, uh, because maybe it's gonna take a while to do, I don't know, I already made a tutorial both on cloud functions and both on Firebase rules. Now if you look at both of those tutorials, you're gonna have all of the resources you need to actually do some homework and implement these chat restrictions and expansions. I say restriction because you know we're actually restricting the user for from deleting other people's messages. And I say expansion because we are actually adding a profanity filter. So you can make all of those things yourselves by just watching my two tutorials on the cloud functions and the Firebase real-time database rules that I did on the channel that are probably showing up on screen right now. Thank you ever so much for watching this video to the very end. I hope you really learned something new today. And you know, if you did, leave a like if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you're new. That's it from me. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. See ya!